<laughs> Thank you. The following interview was conducted with Murray Blackwelder, Senior Vice President for Advancement for Purdue University's uh, Oral History Program. It took place on Thursday, March 26, 2009, in the television studio. The interviewer is Catherine Marquis, the Oral History Librarian. Welcome. Dr. Glad Good to morning. be here. Thank you Catherine. very much. Let's start with the early years. Tell us where you were born and your parents and siblings and early years. Okay. Uh, I was born April 3rd, 1947, uh, in Newton, Kansas. Uh, my dad was uh, uh, an accountant most of his life and uh, a lot of times for automobile uh, dealers. And so uh, we moved from Newton to Marion to my uh, I grew up really in Augusta, Kansas, 15 miles east of Wichita, and uh, so went to grade school, high school from Augusta, Kansas. I have one sister. Uh, she uh, is, uh, let's see, seven years older than I am, and uh, she uh, currently lives in Dallas, Texas. Okay. Uh, my mother's still alive. She's 90 years of age, and she lives still in Wichita, Kansas, yeah, yeah. and so... Uh, that's uh tell us a little bit about high school what were there any organizations that you were in and then uh, uh size of the class and yeah it's very it. very interesting uh, you know here i've worked for public education for so many uh, public higher education for so many years and very and some large institutions but uh quite frankly i owe a lot to the small private school i went to in college because in high school i was somewhat involved uh not a not as much as you might uh, guess and uh, so I was in the basic, well, what was it back then, high Y and, and national uh, merit scholar, uh, student. And uh, I, w I was involved in a few things. I, wasn't, I was not involved in sports. Uh, virtually, I worked through high school. I uh, had a, a job uh, every night after school at a dry cleaners, uh, delivering clothes for, for three years. Super. So, uh, uh, but it, when I went to college, uh, a lot of that changed, and I, I really became involved in everything. And uh, where'd you go? Tell us about college. Where did well, you go? I went to a small school, uh, Baker University, the oldest school in Kansas, uh, uh, 1858, and uh, Methodist related. We we grew up uh, in the Methodist Church, so that had a lot to do with uh, where I went to school. Plus, I wanted to be involved with something that. Uh, uh, I wanted a small school, and then I, for some reason, I was a, in, uh, wanted to be involved in a fraternity. Uh, so Baker was the only school in Kansas, a small school that had all those things, and it, and it fit like a glove. Uh, I became very involved in everything in, at, at the university. Uh, uh, ran for student body president. I was vice president of my fraternity. I, w I just got totally involved in Baker, and really uh, that experience yeah. changed. Uh, a lot of things. What, Changed my what was your major? What program did you take? Uh, well, I started in, uh, this is very interesting too, I started in dentistry and only in a small private school did the professor after the second semester in organic chemistry take me aside and I still remember it. It was very nice. He could have done it so, so much worse, but he, he very gently said, son, I don't think uh, you either have to step up uh, a, a tremendous amount or uh, you need to find a new uh, major. And so it, right then I knew uh, uh, I couldn't handle uh, the next uh, semester of organic chemistry. And so I switched into business and uh, quite frankly I, I did very well and uh, the rest is history. It went on from there, right? Yes. <laughs> now was there some graduate, after, what happened after college? you go to graduate well, school? Well, I, I got very lucky, graduated in 1969 and uh, Baker is 50 miles outside of Kansas City. I married a Kansas City girl, and uh, she also went to Baker. She also has a lot of the same backgrounds I have. And so we matched very well, and uh, um, so I, we were wanting to live in Kansas City, and I, I graduated on Sunday, uh, on a Sunday, and, and uh, on a Monday I started Hallmark Cards. I got a great job uh, right out of college in product management in the gift wrap line at Hallmark Cards, and uh, uh, it, it was a tremendous experience. All right. And then what, did you go to graduate school? Then what, how long did you stay? Well, the Hallmark uh, uh, was uh, very beneficial towards all that, and so they uh, paid your way uh, for graduate school. So I went to the University of Missouri at Kansas City and got a, a graduate degree in, in public administration. 
in policy and planning, and I thought I, at one point, uh, this was after a couple years at Hallmark, and Hallmark is one of the greatest public uh, companies in the, in the world, and, uh, but I, uh, I spent a lot of time with the artist, and we would develop, we'd do our market research for what the public's buying in gift wrap. I mean, is it a, is it a traditional white snowman on a blue background, you know, with a carrot in the nose? And, or, you know, do they, would they buy a, a fuchsia snowman, one, you know, blah, blah, blah. And so you, you really get very, very creative. And, uh, but I had a small cubicle in a very large room, and uh, it was uh, something I didn't think I could do the rest of my life. So I, I got a, a degree uh, in policy and planning thinking I wanted to get into hospital administration. And uh, so I, I found that was a little harder move uh, after you've been out three or four years than, I, than after, even after I got the degree. So I, I, a job came open at Baker University, uh, a new president come on board and he was hiring an alumni director. Well, I was, uh, I, w I probably had the credentials for that. Uh, I'd, you know, I knew everything about Baker, I'd been totally involved. Uh, and so I took that job, and as you can imagine, uh, you saw where, <laughs> you've seen where that uh, took me from there on. Okay. So were your career path, were you there until you came to Purdue, or what was your career path before you Oh, no. Purdue? I've been at five universities, and so uh, Baker, uh, I, I spent a year as Director of Alumni Relations, and then I soon found out that uh, you, uh, um, there was a job called uh, Director of Development for, for Baker, so I uh, was promoted into that job the next year. And uh, I stayed there for about uh, seven years and uh, then went to Rockers College, a Jesuit school in Kansas City, uh, and an excellent school, and uh, worked for uh, uh, two wonderful uh, priests there, and uh, my tenure there. Uh, and then I went to Wichita State, uh, and I was the executive director of the foundation at, uh, at Wichita State. Uh, we ran a uh, $100 million campaign there, and uh, then I went to Iowa State, and that's where I uh, was hired by Dr. Jiski. Uh, we'd just finished our campaign at Wichita State. I was ready for the next move and a larger campaign. Uh, and uh, so I was hired, really, Dr. Jiski's first day there. And uh, I spent uh, the next 10 years at Iowa State doing two campaigns. And, uh, and then Dr. Jiski left, and uh, I, I, had a, I spent a year with an interim president. And then uh, a year later, I interviewed for this job, and uh, got this job, and uh, I've been we here. Go, go, go I've been here eight years. Right. Yes. So we'll go and tell one of the things that you you're liaison with university community, and also sometimes the university university development and advancement was it a title change, or did they used to use the term university development? Uh, I was thinking of researchers, and they might hear one term and not the other. That, that's a good point. Uh, the, the term advancement uh, came in, oh, I, I think in the 80s or something like that, and really, uh, it really encompasses the public relations part of the, of the university, the development, and the alumni relations. And so, in, um, at, at Iowa State, I was the liaison to the alumni association, and I and I had uh, uh, I had all three, and then all, when I got here, Dr. Jiski had had formed a new job called vice president for advancement, and it had it had public relations, or here it was university relations, uh, development, uh, public radio, and. Uh, and I'm the li liaison to the Alumni Association here. Oh, okay. So it, uh, the, the advancement's kind of the umbrella, and uh, I really do think that's the, uh, that's the key to success if, if you have the, the umbrella approach to uh, external relations. Sure, I understand. So the initial responsibilities, and then, then you started the campaign. So let's talk a little bit about the campaign for Purdue. <clears throat> uh, I'll leave in your own words, getting it started and well, it it, uh, it it really when I interviewed, uh, I, I I when I came to interview, I realized there was four other uh, people that were doing public interviews here, and uh, f uh, four uh, four others doing public presentations. So, 
Uh, I've been told that I was going to give a public pres presentation, and uh, then I figured out, well, what number am I here, you know, and I, I think I was like fourth in the list, so I decided, uh, and then I found out who some of the people were, and they were uh, people with, uh, who were already heads of foundations. I said, well, the competition's pretty tough here at Purdue, so I said, I, I, uh, I changed my approach in, in that interview, and uh, uh, and uh, I was right, uh, but I, I, what I told them then, I said, well, I'm the only one that has worked with Dr. Jiske, obviously, for the last nine years, and uh, I'm, I'm the one that can come here and I'll hit the ground running, and while everyone else will, you know, take their time. And then I said the other thing was that Purdue had been um, uh, decentralized in their fundraising, where the fundraisers reported to the deans, and not to a vice president for advancement. And I said, the other thing I said up front, I said, I don't even want the job if we can't centralize fundraising. And so uh, I, I, I'm sure I was a little bit more uh, uh, outspoken than, than some of the others, but anyway, I ended up getting the job. Uh, so the first day on the job, it was very simple. Uh, after spending nine years uh, with, uh, uh, with Dr. Jiski, I knew him ex extremely well. We went back, and virtually the first conversation we had was, I, I, I'm, I'm a campaigner, so if there's one thing I do know, I know how to do campaigns. And so I got right down to the basics, uh, what was his contract? You know, when will, I knew we had a mandatory 65-year retirement here, so that on our first hour, we really figured out that we had to go back uh, a little caveat here. The Big Ten does seven-year campaigns. So if you want to compare apples to apples in the Big Ten, you better be doing a seven-year campaign too. So I, I'd been used to five-year campaigns in the Big 12. So we knew we, knew we had to do a seven-year campaign. We, uh, he had just finished the strategic plan. You know, so that been, was finished when you came? Yeah, he had been here a year, so he got the strategic plan done. So he was ready. So, but when we figured out the numbers, we had to go back and pick up the year uh, his first year there, because that was uh, he was going to retire, and he did retire on June 30, 07. And so we had to go back and pick up a year that uh, I wasn't even there, that he was there, that really wasn't one of our better fundraising years. But uh, so it, that's our first conversation. We established the campaign immediately. We uh, I went out and did the did the uh, policy uh, statement on when how we're going to count and and when we're going to start the campaign. So it really started July 1st, 2000, and ended June 30, 2007, to make a seven-year campaign. Uh, so after we established the parameters and uh, we'll make sure we were all together on and and you know I walked out after probably the first hour understanding uh, everything about we were going to do it just like we did at Iowa State. So I was off and running uh, uh, with the ability to pull the campaign together with the deans and, and start the feasibility immediately. So uh, we, we were, and that's what happened. Uh, I came in June of uh, 2001 and uh, by September one of the key things happened in the campaign and that was when we uh, announced uh, the, uh, the Burke Nanotechnology Building. And from then on, uh, we, it, it was magic. We had, we had a magic seven years. And it just all started, the momentum uh, continued to build, and uh, uh, it was very successful. How would you, you have a, you had a committee too of, uh, that were involved in that, and also the silent phase took some time too. Uh, am I correct? In yes, that? we didn't go. Uh, we didn't go public. public with the campaign. You're right. exactly right. We didn't go public uh, with the campaign until the next fall, until we made sure that the uh, we had uh, we knew what the totals were. Right. Uh, what had happened? Uh, we we uh, we missed a campaign. You might say at Purdue, uh, if you compare ourselves to our other peers, that uh, in the '90s. Uh, we probably didn't do a campaign when uh, we could have, and uh, and uh, so we were. Our last campaign ended in the very early 90s. Uh, that was the Vision 21. I believe so, around uh, around 400 million dollars, and very little buildings. And if you remember from there on in the 90s, we uh, the state we didn't have a lot of state buildings either. 
So there was a real pinup demand by the time we started doing the strategic plan and then the feasibility on the strategic plan for, for buildings. Uh, and um, so we, we had a, a tremendous amount of buildings in this, in this campaign. And uh, so, so it, we, we didn't know, could we raise a billion? I mean, to go from uh, around 400 million to a billion, uh, that's a pretty good jump. Uh, could we do a billion whatever? Uh, we ended up, uh, tell you the truth, the figures only, uh, there's a, several ways to study. I mean, past fundraising is, is the most uh, obvious, and, and you can't get to a billion studying, because we only averaged about 60 million in total production in the 90s. Well, take 60 million times seven. That's four hundred twenty million dollars. So, right. so you can't get you can't get to a billion from there. So you had to uh, go out and get some leadership gifts that were so much higher than the past that to to even think about a million a billion dollars. And so that's exactly what happened. By the time I got here, Dr. Jiski had already uh, gotten the the Mike Burke gift for uh, the nanotechnology building, the and Don Cyphers. Uh, a gift of uh, around 13 million, and uh, uh, and the Bill Benley gift. So we he already had done the, uh, some trim, tremendous leadership gift work before I got here, and then uh, uh, I came back and I gave him three. Uh, I think it was three scenarios uh, for a, a billion, uh, and then I think the 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 uh, one on the outreach was a billion three. And so uh, I don't know how, I don't remember uh, uh, exactly how we got to it, but we went with the billion three. Uh, and because uh, it, it, we, we were get, gathering momentum, like we, we couldn't believe the momentum the, uh, and the, everybody at the university got behind it. And it, it was just uh, kind of euphoric and uh, uh, for fundraisers. Uh, I'm, I mean, uh, I, I'm sure people watch this and go, how do people get excited about fundraising? But uh, I get You're really- You're sharing it, and you, 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 you have to have the momentum, and you have to be excited about yes. it, and, and convey that. And I'm one of the few people, probably, that really get excited about fundraising. But uh, no, it, it, really, uh, it really took off. We announced, uh, about a year later, a billion three campaign, and uh, uh, and then uh, a few years later, uh, I, I forget exactly when we extended the campaign uh, to a billion seven, but it was uh, about two years before the end. Right. We, we had such momentum that uh, we took the opportunity to uh, take it to a billion seven. Right. And, and back to that question for researchers, how you, you had a committee, a, a campaign committee and your co-chairs. No doubt um, about it. Uh, the, we we, we have uh, the... There's about three things. Well, there's a lot of things you probably need for a capital campaign success. Uh, one good. of them is good leadership, uh, and uh, of course, Dr. Jiski provided that. Uh, the second thing is good volunteers. Um, we uh, are. Uh, the third thing is a good organizational chart. Now we uh, had a great organizational chart. We are we are totally organized correctly with with uh, with the three groups working together and uh, reporting to one person who can coordinate and really uh, develop this momentum and synergy Keep at a university. So we had that, and, uh, but we, didn't, we weren't formed as a foundation. Uh, a lot of Big Ten schools have that separate 501c3 foundation out here that run their campaigns. Uh, I truly believe this is the right way to do it, but on the other hand, they had a board and, and they had a long-standing board that they'd been cultivating, a, you know, maybe 40, 50, 60 people over these years. And guess what? We hadn't been doing that at Purdue. We had no board. And so we formed the, the campaign steering committee uh, for Purdue. Uh, Mike Burke was the chair. He obviously gave later a, a leadership gift for that. And so we put about 53 people, as it turned out at the end, on the campaign steering committee and we met them several times a year, and they really helped us uh, with uh, to help us make some calls. They obviously all gave very generously, and uh, then they also provided a lot of advice on the w along the way. And uh, that really, as a fundraiser, when you have a group like that working with you, that really makes it a lot more fun.
Yeah, it's a good resource, and the good source oh. works both ways. Oh, you have to. Right. And and just a little side note, I think mm -hmm. we had such a good uh, experience there. Uh, France Cordova have, has already uh, realized that. So we've since then, and just uh, in February of of '09, we we had the first meeting of the Purdue Foundation, a permanent structure that we'll have, and we started with 35 people that will, will that will continue to help us with our fundraising efforts. Yeah, that's good. And then you had some other things like your announcements, and that kind of helped a little bit, like at homecoming, you uh, some of the gifts and things like that. So periodically you would um, men have those and tied in with either homecoming or some other I activities on campus. Well, I, and, and like that, that, that goes back to the organizational sure. structure being what it was, uh, being uh, able to tie in public relations, uh, marketing, um, and uh, events, and fundraising together, uh, and even with the Alumni Association. Uh, we took advantage and we really did uh, package a lot of things. And so at homecoming, you're right, we, it ju well, we brought a, the one thing uh, we really did before I go back to that is uh, we, we built a public relations plan. So that uh, we, we not only had the fundraising plan going on one side, but we had what I called the communications plan going on the other side. Uh, and uh, Joe Bennett, who was there at this time, he uh, helped run that. And we developed a complete marketing plan for the state. And that meant marketing. Uh, we, used, we started television. Uh, um, uh, we used a lot of television in the Indy in the area. Uh, we started uh, the community visits across the state. We did seven to ten community visits across the state. We started doing all the civic dinner, dinners in, 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 in Indianapolis. Uh, what Purdue had never had a table at, at the major dinners. Uh, we, uh, uh, we started a, uh, the Purdue Day at the State Fair. Uh, which we had never done, and we took over the state fair for the first day, and, and that's been a tremendous success ever since. We started a Chicago Purdue Day. Uh, we brought homecoming back. We had never had homecoming like we started in, in like in 2001. And, uh, and then we started doing a major event at the Black Expo. We call that the Big Four. So we, we put the Big Four in with community visits, a, our television, our, all our media efforts, and we, we built a communications plan. And if you had a, so we had a good communications plan going, we had a good campaign, and then when, whenever we had the events, we would package them, and that's helped, that helped create the synergy and momentum that uh, really was Kept it working and kept it flowing, right? And yes, then you it also, did. you took it on the road. Yes, we too. did. Right. Uh, the, then, then we, we not, we wanted to uh, win the state first, you might say, uh, but then we did uh, start uh, national alumni uh, meetings across the, the nation, and we did probably uh, seven to ten uh, uh, meetings a year where uh, we would take this, this package on the road and, and go to uh, uh, areas that we needed to go to. Mm -hmm. you have, you're a liaison with the Alumni Association. How does, how does that, for researchers? Are well, for example, I would go to them and talk to them about what what are the key areas that we needed to go to as far as our alumni. And so we developed a relationship where uh, if they took at that time Dr. Jiski out and I took Dr. Jiski out, well, that, that we weren't solving the purposes right. here and, sure. and he didn't have enough time to do both. So we, uh, we both realized uh, the Alumni Association would, uh, uh, would be the MC for those events and they would be under the auspices of the Alumni Association and, uh, and we would have our alumni meetings but during the day uh, we would then make calls in those key areas uh, for our fundraising part. So we really developed a, a great team on virtually everything, on, on the alumni calls, on homecoming, uh, on the Chicago Day, all those are, you know, I want to give the credit to the Alumni Association for, for working, uh, working with, with us and help planning all those. And, uh, and so, uh, the, you know, this is such a, uh, uh, you know, the presidents only have so much time, and uh, we have to work together, and it, it's, it's really a team sport. And uh, the, as you can imagine, in higher education, public higher education, we are, s so many universities are siloed, and all these things are separate, 
And I think what, what, what happened here in 2001 was we, we, we knocked down all the silos and everybody worked together and uh, it really did uh, produce a good result. Yeah. Uh, sir, when did, uh, you were talking earlier that you upped it to 1.7. You had to give some, that must be some serious thought, but if you, get, if you feel the momentum and you have a feel, you know that it probably will, is attainable. Right, uh, and, and uh, you, you wouldn't have extended if you didn't know you could make it right. because well, uh, well, at the end of a campaign, uh, they, they don't ask you, well, did you get close? They ask you, did you make it or didn't you? you know, and so you don't want to be, uh, uh, you didn't make it. And so, uh, so no, we knew by the time we extended, uh, we knew that where the, some of the gifts were out there. Uh, and so it, it was going so well at a, at, a, at, a, at a billion three that we knew we could uh, do it at a billion seven. You were talking about the team, and one thing that a couple of research I did, the community was involved, the local community, and uh, which, you know, was kind of a, a addition piece. Yes. Um, it, it it was very exciting. Uh, I, I'm I'm a big believer in the town ga a good town gown relationship, and uh, so we developed the the community campaign. Uh, I was we were very uh, uh, lucky to get Linda Rohrman and Joe Seaman at that time to be our co-chairs. We had a lot of great people with us, and uh, uh, that that just worked. And uh, uh, you know, what I really like about working in development is, um, you know, and it's not me, but I'll, I'll use the word I, but we change people's lives. And we get people involved in a university, and especially it happens mostly in a community campaign where they haven't been involved as much in the university. Maybe they're, maybe they're over the river <laughs> and they just don't get involved as much. And I'll tell you what, I can't tell you how many people you know, in the community campaign are still involved vitally in, in different aspects that we got them involved in during that campaign. And it changed their social life. It changed, it changed a, a, a lot about what they do now. And uh, they, they, they thank me. Uh, and that's, that's really unbelievable. At, at the same time we did that campaign, though, we did a, the, a campaign that raised exactly the same amount of money with the faculty staff. And that was a real surprise. And they, the faculty and staff really stepped up and really did a fantastic job. And uh, I probably enjoy, uh, I, I'm, I'm lucky to be the uh, advisor to Pura, the Purdue. I was going to ask you about that. Yeah, the, the retirement group. And uh, I have as much fun with them as any group I have. And uh, uh, we, we, we not only have a good time together, I enjoy working with them and, and raising money for, for things that they know that they want to change lives for too. And so, uh, so that, 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 that was a real special uh, time. Right, and it gave you a chance to meet some of these people who you know, have been retired for some sure. time. Sure, oh sure. Some, similar to what I'm doing, people have been involved with the university and are now sharing their, you know, their reminiscences and things of that sort. Um, the, the newest one, I want to talk about access and success, that's the one that's currently going. Um, that's, tell us a little bit about that particular one. Well, I, I, you know, it's, it's one of those things. Uh, let me give you a, a way I, the scenarios mm -hmm. usually work. Uh, a, you you finish a campaign on June 30, 07, and uh, you you talk to the president and you say, well, uh, we're probably going to take uh, three years off at least, and then we'll start the quiet phase, maybe a campaign or so later, uh, and maybe by the end of five years you'll be able to announce another campaign. Well, uh, that didn't work because guess what? On July 1, 07, we had a new president. <laughs> and, and rightly so. If I was uh, France, I'd be doing the same thing. She goes, well, now what are we going to do? And I go, well, we got a little donor fatigue out there. Uh, we got five-year pledges on a lot of people. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a unique situation we have here. And so I, we had we'd started to work on Mackey Arena renovation. So uh, we decided that uh, the first we would do, uh, she talked a lot about access and success, and she wanted to uh, uh, make an a, a impact on student, students. And so we, uh, we kind of coined that phrase, or she did. And then uh, we said, well, let's do Mackey Arena as phase one, and then we'll come, maybe, maybe this will be a three-phase thing uh, during your, your term here. 
because again, you have to look at a president and say, well, how long are you going to be here? And, you know, and how yeah, long? Yeah, that campaign? all has to be factored in. Yeah, so we did that with uh, with France also, and uh, uh, so we we came out with the Mackey renovation uh, publicly at a game in February in '08. And uh, to, just to recap, that's a $99 million total project, of which $32 million is private fundraising. The balance is from the Big Ten contract. And so uh, we, uh, we've been very successful on that. Right now we're at, uh, we're at over $25 million uh, towards the $32 million on that. And uh, we will finish that by December of '09. Um, so we got that kicked off, and uh, that's going fine. And then uh, we were going to have the inauguration in April, uh, and uh, so we decided, to, and scholarships is going to be a main theme, so we did a, a seven-year plan uh, It turned out to be a $304 million scholarship uh, campaign, which we announced at uh, Dr. Cordova's uh, inauguration. And so uh, it's in, we got several types of scholarships we're raising money for. And uh, just last week we got, uh, uh, I've been in this business 35 years, I, I've never received an $8 million check in the mail anonymous. And last week we did. And so, and guess what? It was for scholarships, six million for scholarships and two million unrestricted. So it was somebody I think who knows this pretty well, oh, yeah. and but it was totally anonymous. Don't know who it is, but uh, this, we're getting uh, some very nice gifts on this. We're at uh, 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 we're nearing 90 million uh, towards uh, the 304 million uh, campaign, and so uh, so both campaigns are going very well. As you know, uh, this is. Uh, uh, 2009, we've just finished this strategic plan, so we're in the midst now of, uh, of kind of like where we were when I started here in 2001. Uh, we're uh, trying to uh, probably start the planning for phase three okay. of, of the Access and Success campaign. Okay. So uh, it'll probably take a year or so before uh, that all comes together. Yeah. But uh, that's that's exactly where we are right, right. now. So one thing I wanted to ask you: Did you find in your campaign that plan giving seemed to increase or, or not? Uh, well, one it, thing about it's plan one way of doing. It. I just yes. you don't hear so much about it. Years ago, we didn't hear that much about it. Uh, th that's true, and uh, um, and you know we we need to make it clear to everyone that they should plan their estates. And to this day, you won't believe how many people don't plan their estates. Uh, they haven't made that decision to how to uh, leave a legacy. And uh, virtually everyone can do that. Uh, our endowments start at $25,000. And just about anybody can uh, leave us an endowment for $25,000. So we, uh, we, we, we try to get out there, and uh, especially when we're talking to people in their 70s and 80s, we might ask them for $100,000 on a special project, but we also try to say, would you also put us in the will? Then, you know, this is where you, this is your, where you want to make a difference. Would you consider an additional a gift in your will? Um, so, no, plan giving, I think, is, is huge uh, uh, for the future. Um, we do about seventy million dollars a year right now in new plan gifts a year, and so uh, we're building. We've built a tremendous inventory now at the university of these plan gifts that will be maturing, you know, in the future. Yeah. And if 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 uh, if we're not asking, and uh, you know, I'm for all, I think there's room for everybody here in the nonprofit world, but uh, everybody should be asking because uh, the donor will make up their mind. Uh, they, I can't be talked into giving to something I don't, I'm not interested right. in. Right. And I certainly wouldn't leave a planned gift to something I wasn't interested in. Mm -hmm. So I think we all should be asking uh, the different people to, um, to consider a, a bequest and uh, uh, you know, leave the world a little bit better place. That's right, and, and a time is appropriate if they're giving a gift now, have you, you might want to factor as you just said a moment ago, factored into no doubt another one or something of that sort. That's right. Um, I want to you. Um, you were, have you been a faculty fellow 
at uh, Purdue? No. Oh, okay. That That's a nice program, and a lot of the people are involved in it, mm -hmm. and uh, so that has worked out. Great. Um, the re the uh, Retirees Association you talked about, let's talk about, congratulations on that uh, outstanding uh, fundraising executive award that you won. Did, do, was that, did that come as a surprise? Sometimes I p ask people if it, that, that was a surprise. Uh, no, I didn't know about it. Uh, the staff and uh, some key alumni uh, had nominated me for that. Uh, and uh, we have two organizations in, in the fundraising business uh, in public education. One's uh, the Council for the Advancement and Support of Education, CASE, and one's a AFP, uh, Association of Fund Fundraising uh, Professionals. And so um, this was a, uh, the Indiana Chapter Award, so no, I was very grateful and very, uh, very nice. much a surprise. Very nice. Let's talk about your professional associations there. You've been continue to be active in those as well? Uh, yes, uh. I've been, uh, over the years, uh, I've been a national trustee for CASE in Washington, and uh, I've been president of the chapter of uh, uh, AFP and, and, and different places I've been. Mm -hmm. um, here later in my career, I, I haven't been as involved, but early in my career, I was very involved. Right. Uh, the, the economic, does that, how does that, in all your years of working, sometimes economic downturn can affect? Uh, oh, yes. Uh, I don't think any of us have seen anything like we're going through right now. Uh, the in the years that you've been involved yeah, with it, huh? I, I started really in 74 in the business, and uh, the, uh, I just had lunch this week with uh, Gene Temple, who runs the, uh, the uh, Center for Philanthropy in Indianapolis, and gifts of a million dollars or more are down 33% of the, the last quarter, and uh, it's, it's not looking uh, like it's coming back. Uh, our, right now, uh, our year ends in June 30, and right now our number of gifts are down uh, about 6%. And uh, our, our dollars uh, in the uh, smaller category is, is, is down about the same uh, percentage. So uh, I'm, I'm quite frankly surprised it's not down more. Uh, so uh, that's good. That's yeah, good to so, hear. So we're we're doing we're doing fine, I think, in regards to the uh, economic downturn. And uh, uh, I just mm -hmm. hope that. Uh, uh, the stimulus and the things that are happening right now uh, uh, work, and uh, we'll be okay when we start the fall. There you go. Okay, let's talk about the next uh, the next stage. You're going to be taking another position. I mean, you want to make any comment on that? Sure. I uh, uh, I've been uh, very fortunate uh, uh, starting out at a, a private school of, with 8,000 alumni. Uh, I, uh, at that point, after several years, we did a, I still remember, a, we did a million dollar campaign at Baker University. And I thought, and I still think, that was a big deal. And, I would uh, say so, right. <laughs> and, uh, well but, done. But only a small number of alumni, so I've gone through the ranks and really uh, 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 have got to do so many different things. And, but I really learned the basics in fundraising uh, kind of uh, at the small private school where you do it all. Uh, as director of development, you did your own annual, f annual uh, phone campaign, and uh, that means you set up the phones, take the phones down, do the pledge cards, do the whole telethon, recruit the students, and, and then you go do the plan. That's giving. a good learning thing. That's yes. where you know, and then when you got the team together, you know what needs to be done. It's so I, I learned annual fund, I learned plan giving, <laughs> I, I learned corporate giving, and uh, uh, so I, I learned it uh, the right way. And so uh, when I got to uh, the bigger jobs, I, I certainly knew wh what to do. But I've always, uh, I really am a campaigner, and like I said a minute, a minute ago, I've really enjoyed campaigns. I, I really enjoy uh, just what happened here at Purdue, pull the team together and, and get it going and create that momentum that makes it a success. And uh, I came here because I, uh, I loved working with Dr. Jiske, but I also really wanted to do a billion dollar campaign. In this business, you, uh, there, there is a little bit of you know, uh, prestige to billion dollar campaigns. So uh, I've done that, and uh, I've worked for the small private school, I've, I've worked for the large uh, public, and so uh, this, uh, this job came uh, uh, available, and the, uh, the, uh, the gr a group in Kansas City uh, uh, 
knew of my ties to the uh, to Kansas City, and so uh, they they finally have uh, recruited me to go and start a new foundation. Uh, it's going to be a separate foundation from the University of Missouri. Uh, this is the university is the University of Missouri at, Missouri at Kansas City. So I'm going to create a new foundation, recruit. Uh, uh, there's seven uh, board members that are, have started it, so they, I will report to them. I'll recruit the whole staff, uh, and uh, I'm in the process of determining what that organizational chart will look like, and of course I'm pushing for the same one that I have here because I know it works. And uh, so we're, we're just in the formative uh, part of, of, of doing something I've never done before. So I've never run a, a, a private foundation and been the president of that. And so I'm, I'm very excited about one more uh, new thing to do, one more challenge. Super. And uh, after we get that all organized, we'll then do one campaign. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that's a new chancellor at the University of uh, Missouri at Kansas City. So uh, I'm uh, excited about working to him with him. And of course, uh, the other part of the story, as Paul Harvey would say, uh, my wife is a native. Our son and his wife and son are in Kansas City. Uh, Diane's father, who's 90 years old, is in Kansas City. And my mother's two hours away, who's 90, in Wichita, Kansas. So that kind of tells you uh, a lot, too. <laughs> Sounds good. Now let's talk about how about a favorite Purdue uh, tradition and an outstanding event. Uh, there's no doubt about uh, the Purdue tradition. I've, uh, I've been around the, uh, a lot, the, the Big 12, uh, the private sector, and now the Big 10, and we have undoubtedly the best fight song of anybody in the country. And I'm telling you, I've heard, I've heard bad ones. There's a lot of schools, they can't even sing their fight song, you know? And we got one that uh, we sing at a drop of a hat. And uh, so you... It we is, jump up and go for Exactly. It. And uh, uh, not many people uh, have that. That is uh, such a, a great tradition and uh, a great fight song. And those who don't have it are, I guarantee you, are envious. <laughs> right. Oh, do you have an outstanding event that you'd like to share with us? Uh, an outstanding event here at Purdue? Any, any of, not doesn't necessarily have to be at Purdue. Well, uh, in your life. Oh well, the, I think the two outstanding events in our lives. We uh, were fortunate to uh, raise two sons, and uh, so uh, we uh, the birth of each child is uh, probably the most outstanding event uh, in your life. Um, if if I look back and just capitalize it here at at, at Purdue, um, I the the other thing I probably haven't given as much credit to is uh, I have. Also in, in, in the fundraising and development organization, I have uh, uh, at least five, six professionals that are just in the events planning business. And so we have an outstanding events group. And if I go back and if I think of the maybe the three highlights here at Purdue where I, I knew it was happening and uh, uh, after this many years, you, you, you can kind of sit back and go, Gee whiz, it really is going well. And the first one was that, that September in 2001 where we had everybody in the audience. The governor, I remember, came for some reason. I think it was a, a budget hearing. Uh, we, had, uh, we had a senator here for, for some reason. I don't know why, but it was the one where we, uh, and we really did something a little scary. We had everyone uh, do those remote toys in the sand where we broke ground on, on the Burke Nano Technology Building. And so number one, I didn't know whether I could imagine the toys not working or whatever. Everybody had a heck of a great time. It went beautifully and uh, that one was special. I, I knew that one was special uh, in, in the middle of it. Um, the, the second one came a lot later and this always happens when you get uh, this number of astronauts together at Purdue, and I'm sure it happened before I got here with the astronaut reunions, but I, I, I'd never experienced it until we dedicated the Armstrong Building. Uh, that night, when we dedicated that building, and uh, we, um, uh, we had them all together, it, it was magic. Uh, it was... Uh, Everybody there just left on a cloud, just realizing, uh, because a lot of them got up to talk and say a few words. And uh, at the end of that evening, it was, uh, yeah, you know, you'd been to a special event. Uh, you know, we have the, 
the two alums, the first and last man that walked on the moon, and, and they were there, and they talked, and uh, uh, pure magic. It was just magic. Perfect. Just pure magic. Right. Then the last one was, uh, obviously, uh, and sometimes this doesn't happen. Uh, I've finished a lot of campaigns. I still remember walking out the door uh, with my boss uh, at, in Wichita, Kansas. Uh, we had uh, the big end of the campaign. Uh, we were in the Marriott. The place was full, et cetera. And uh, we did the we did the last event, uh, the banquet, and uh, we looked at each other, and uh, it was we were it was empty. I mean, we just didn't go. We go is 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 that all there is? You know, we, I mean, we we thought it would be more euphoric. Uh, so I I've, I've had that experience. Well, I I did not have that experience on June 30, 2007. When we finished this seven-year campaign on that night, on Dr. Jiski's last day, uh, everybody left that uh, event uh, on, a, on another cloud. And uh, we, uh, that, that event was special. It, was, uh, it, it, it just raised everybody's spirits and uh, I think definitely one of uh, the highlights the of the highlight, campaign. That's right. Any, in closing, any uh, topics you want to return to or leave it, leave it to you to some closing comments that you'd like to share with the researchers? All right. Anything additional? No, I think we have uh, we've pretty well covered it. Any closing comments um, as you look back on it, your uh -huh. legacy? You're leaving, you got some footprints here. Sure. Well, in, in closing, I'd, I'd just like to say, uh, you know, eight years has been a great time here, and uh, Diane uh, works in student services, and we, we both have, have had a, uh, a tremendous experience at Purdue University, and uh, we uh, will always be boiler, boiler makers. Uh, we, uh, <laughs> we hope to, uh, I hope to be back. You know, some of the buildings that we raise money for aren't even out of the ground yet. So uh, we, we, got, we got Hanley Hall, we got Marriott Hall, we got several things that we've worked on. So I hope to come back for some of those in the future. Uh, but no, we, this is definitely uh, uh, the highlight of my career. Uh, you know, you, you don't get to do uh, uh, these things very often. Uh, and uh, to to do a billion seven campaign, and uh, with the uh, with the impact this one had uh, was was truly a great experience. So so no, we're e we're eternally grateful for the experience. But uh, it, as you know, uh, life is built into different phases, and uh, this this next phase uh, we we have to go take care of, right. and uh, so we need to go do that. But uh, uh, this this has been very very special. Right. Thank you very much, Dr. Wright. Thank you. This concludes it. Thank you.